Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Pods of the Multiverse, an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy. I'm the DM for our adventures in the world of Theros. And welcome back to this, our ninth game. Let's go ahead and reintroduce my friends and the players for this game. I'm Jimmy. I play Gran, just one particularly notable Minotaur Barbarian out of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scala. I play Andromedy. I read the story of Pandora's box as a child and learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you or Andromedy? One and the same? <laughs> My name is Jeppy and I play Clix, the Leonin Rogue, who is definitely not his own mother and definitely does not have daddy issues. And I see Jeppy's same joke goes yet another episode. Wait, did I say that last one? You used the definitely not. The, the definitely but not I, a... It's a recurring bit. It's fine. Is it a I'm recurring te- I'm teasing. Yeah, it is. It's a recurring bit that I have created that I am unaware of. <laughs> I thought you were doing it on purpose. Yeah, I me too. I 100% <laughs> did not notice that at all. God. I mean, wait a minute. All of my comedy is intentional. Of course I do. Yeah, did you take an improv workshop or something? A plus. Must have. Also, oh to call God. it comedy in and of itself is comedy. Is it? No, nothing's funny. But you know what is... This episode probably actually is. <laughs> no, no, it is it's explicitly not. <laughs> there is a whole ass siege in this episode, so buckle up, everyone, and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, here we go. During their rest amid the company of Bratos and his hoplite scouting party, our heroes found a moment of calm before their coming storm. Gran caught up with Califex, who told him of his newly discovered lineage, Zelectoi. Andromedy concluded their reading of the mysterious Tome of Understanding as we know it, and Clix promptly went to sleep. In the night, Andromedy was visited by Polymede, who told them about the dire state of Akros they returned to. They then told her of the creation's eye and the two fragments, two jewels, that are within Akros held by none other than Lyukar and Hargat. Unable to teleport the entire party, Polymede left Andromedy to form a plan, an attempt to reach the Citadel together. From there, the party were led by Bratos down an ancient and secret path, down into the canyon walls, and across a secondary bridge deep below the Faragax itself. This narrow bridge through the Black Mist proved a challenge for Gran, nearly falling into the darkness. But with Clix and Califex jumping to his aid, they all crossed safely. Finding themselves in a series of dark tunnels, Bratos warned them of the Orata, a secret group of thieves who used these tunnels as their base. Choosing to go the rest of the way without the hoplites, and Clix taking the lead, they soon found an enigmatic figure from Clix's past. Phaedra, a Leonin who alluded to having once worked with Clix, after a truly edgy series of exchanges, he secured a passage into the Citadel at the cost of, in large quotes, the rest of his treasure. Still can't believe that worked. Once on the Citadel, Andromedy quickly led the party to the Great Hall where Polymede had gathered the Oracle of Eroes, Orissa, the Regent of Akros, Tyrannica, and her counselors. Andromedy quickly made a confident and convincing case for the mission in front of them, that the forces who still stand in the Colophon must prepare to retaliate, and that the rest of Theros must heed this call to action against not Mogus, but a dark and mysterious Titan influence. Clix, then discovering that one of the counselors had fled this scene before he could notice, was in fact Lyukar himself, leapt into action and began pursuing him across the Colophon. Andromedy, after telling Tyrannica in private that Annex, hardened in the forge, still stands at one eye pass, and quickly earning her trust, then took to a bathhouse, where after receiving a foreboding omen from their augury spell, proceeded to open the Pyxis of Pandemonium that contains creation's eye boy howdy a lot of stuff happened last game oh yeah and here we are now (laughs) when do i say what i rolled all right (laughs) so here's how this is gonna work (laughs) i'm going to have the three of you all all of these things are happening simultaneously gran is with califex and orissa andromedy is where they are clicks is where he is I want the three of you to roll off to see what happens first. Okay. It's not going to be clicks. <laughs> I don't know. It might be. I got a two. Okay. Uh, I got a five. 18. Okay. <laughs> We're going off to the most stale it, content. I got the least going on. 
<laughs> this is the order in which I typed up all of these scenes, so this is perfect. Makes sense. For me. Okay. So, Grant, Arissa, the Oracle of Erois, has just come up to you in Califax, wondering where the rest of your party is and what your orders are for the remaining legion here in the Colophon. Okay. This large and muscular centaur looks at you in Califax and says, Well, what are your orders? Assemble a unit of hoplites. We're going to find Hargod. Very well. The two of you should come with me. He proceeds to take you and Califax down and out of the citadel and towards the remaining forces. You are quickly brought to the southern walls, the high walls of the Colophon, and brought up to a sort of staging gallery where you can see that there are a number of hoplite units being mustered behind these incredibly high walls. You can see on the other side, lines, pikes, and spears stand pointed across the field of battle, already hard fought and lost. From there, your view extends down into the swaths of minotaurs and other giant folk still moving about and throwing their boulders and burning rocks against the stone. But even so, they cannot reach up and over this last defense. Finally, one enormous arch stone and iron gate stands atop a wide but incredibly steep stone path. The vaguely familiar, in Gran's mind, perhaps, end of the Erowan Way. Arissa turns to you and says, This won't hold forever. If we are to strike back, we cannot wait. I know we come from different paths, but let us charge out, together. And on that word, we go to Andromedy. Okay. Let's have it. I rolled a one, and I'm somewhat disappointed, I must say. Oh, man, that sucks. <laughs> How incredibly anticlimactic to something that was literally built up for games. Yeah. Chekhov's okay. urn. Chekhov's urn, indeed. It just fell off the mantle. <laughs> All right. Andromedy, go ahead and give me a wisdom save. Sure. Uh, okay, uh, that's not going to do it. That is a 14. That should be with Bless, right? Uh, no, because no. Uh, yeah, they're I, simply opening it. Yeah, they're I just not opened it. holding it and then opening it. Oh, I see. Um, well, maybe failure makes this a little more spicy. Um, so, <laughs> wild. Absolutely wild. Andromedy, you fail the save against the Androphagia. The urn opens, and immediately you are overwhelmed by a brilliant burst of light, blinding you momentarily. Gran, from behind you, back towards the citadel, you see a eruption of light from one of the lower compounds of the citadel. And Andromedy, you start going berserk, alone, yep. in yep. this bath in chamber. Bath. Please describe this. <laughs> Andromedy's real mad. They are raging. Their wet, curly hair is hanging down over their bathrobe, and they shake their head, and it goes flying, and they start cursing in various languages, in Celestial and in Minotaur, whatever creative curse words they can think of, and I don't know, they throw hands at the wall, I guess. Ah! You rage out alone in this room. Go ahead and repeat the save after about six seconds. Okay. God dang it, 16 this time. You keep on raging as you move about in this frenzied state. In your magically induced berserk, you see the urn begin to shimmer and disappear. And the creation's eye is left on the stone floor in front of you. Repeat the save again? Yep. <laughs> Arrogant mortals. Yeah, any any sort of any any sort of uh, commentary and that might be going through it Andromeda's mind. So, this is a 50/50 shot, right? I need specifically an 11. So, this is now the third time that I've failed. Awesome. But you need an 11 to break out. Literally, my best save. It lasts for a minute unless you save at the end of each of your turns. I'll let you may perhaps think of some words that you would say in this state. Yeah, sure. As Andromedy continues 
in their frenzy alone, we cut over to Clix, who, perhaps wildest of the three... Well, who knows? We just opened a Pixis and... And one of the characters just got upset. <laughs> got really <laughs> upset, though. What a scene, though. Anyways, just disguised self into his mother and knocked on this locked door in the pursuit of Lycar. A moment passes, and you hear the door unlocks, but does not open. I let myself in. You open the door and find yourself in a very lavish office chamber. You see tapestries along the wall. You see an ornate desk with piles of papers and scrolls. And you see a window behind that desk into what looks like a sort of interior villa courtyard, as well as another door to the left of that window. Go ahead and give me a perception check. 17. You don't see anybody in this room. You see as you look about briefly, the tapestries plainly depicting a sort of story of a Leonin warrior shaking hands with an Akroan general. Then in the next, they are both fighting against a group of satyrs. And in the third and final, the Leonin and the general standing before an Akroan queen and a young girl at her side. What do you do next? I don't really spend a lot of time on that tapestry at all. I'm kind of focused on where I think Layukar may have gone. Can I just investigate the room to see if maybe there are marks of activity? Like maybe the door I could tell was left ajar, the window, someone stepped through it. Yep. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. A 17 again. Okay. On a 17, you see the preceding door is closed as well. You cannot tell if it is locked, but the desk itself looks like it's been very recently rifled through. You can see the papers and, and scrolls kind of messily arrayed like somebody was digging through it in a hurry. I'm going to go through the courtyard window. Okay. Ignoring all of that, you jump through the window. <laughs> yeah. There's exposition in all of this stuff, but you don't give a shit apparently, so that's Clicks fine. absolutely does not give a shit about any of that. He just needs to find his target. Great. Clicks, you jump through the window. Go ahead and give me an acrobatics check. 22. You jump through the window into this courtyard, and across it you can see another entryway and a figure darting through it. I'll briskly, I'm not going to pursue this person with intent, so I will briskly walk and trail them. I'm not trying to stealth, but I'm also not trying to scare them off or run after them. Okay. You pass through this entryway into a lavish bedchamber. On the other side of this bed, you see the figure of Lyukar in his extravagant red and blue toga, his aged but very keen Leonin eyes. Look back at you in the form that you're currently in. How is this possible? I saw you die. So you do remember me. We got back to Andromeda. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make another roll. Sure. 50% chance. How many of these should I have to make? This is highly improbable. Unable to break this pandemonious frenzy. What do you do? I feel like for the first time they really embrace this furious nature of Clothis and as they're mm. punching the wall and, and thrashing wildly, anyone else who might be walking past might hear them saying arrogant mortals selfish fools picking at the fabric of fate do they not see the harm their hubris has wrought do they not see the ruin and madness their impudence has unleashed she would be wiser to scour you all from this world ungrateful wretches discontented with your place something like that <laughs> insane to that effect <laughs> first of all Brilliant. Second of all, go ahead and make an attack roll. Sure. On the wall? Oh, now I roll well. <laughs> well, you're raging. And of course you roll well. Is this like a melee attack? It'd be an yep. 18. Okay, cool. You punch at the wall, and <laughs> you take two bludgeoning damage from uh, your own frenzy. Really didn't think that would be the first damage of this game. <laughs> Just so 
wild. Here we are. Um, here we are. Uh, as we go back to Gron. Gron, you have found yourself in front of a modest but well-trained looking group of hoplites as another figure marches through the crowd towards you. Go ahead and give me a general intelligence check. Nine. Okay. You would only maybe briefly recognize this figure as the man who, during the outbreak of the siege, was flying overhead in a flying chariot. His very regal armor, adorned with a brilliant red cloak and swath of swords and javelins at his side. He marches up towards you, and he says, Just tell me one thing. Okay. What makes you think you are different from them? I don't believe that I am different from them. I believe that there's a darkness here that runs deep, surpassing that of the rage of Mogus. Something has come over them. He gives you a deferential nod, and without saying another word, whistles into the crowd where you see a pegasus fly out, and as he mounts it, he speaks over the hoplites that have gathered and are prepared for battle. This day shall not be our end. We are Acroans, blood of those who stood against the forces of the usurper god and won. We shall fight until our last breath. And as he speaks, you can see the Pegasus flying up above the wall. With him, he shouts out, For the lives of those already gone into that great and terrible underworld, we shall not yield. Gods of this land, hear us. We are legion. And this is Akros! <laughs> <laughs> the gates begin to thunder open. War horns from within and without blare, screaming and shouting from all around you. Gron, go ahead and roll me initiative as you enter this battle. How long you been sitting on that meme, Andy? A fucking long time. <laughs> <laughs> he referred to the usurper god. Is Who is that? Xenagos. Xenagos, okay. So that's a nat 20 plus two. Hot Ooh. damn. Very cool. Great. The first thing that happens as we enter this enormous battle, the gates begin opening, and you see this champion of Eroes, Aesrius, point his spear forward from atop the Pegasus as the hoplites, with you at the lead, charge forward towards this Minotaur horde. You are leading an elite hoplite unit with Califex at your side and you see in front of you this enormous horde charging for you. For this battle as it unfolds, we will be using a sort of tactical combat system where our heroes will be commanding various infantry units and other types of units based on Matt Colville's rules for 5e Warfare. We are using a simplified version of that, and so we commanding units, they will be taking various actions. This is not a hero versus creature encounter. This is opposing forces in the fray of warfare as this plays out. Gron, it's your move. You rolled highest. All right. How big is this horde? So tactically, there are four directly in front of this gate. You would immediately come into combat with at least one, depending on what you want to do. How many minotaurs am I looking at? Give me a perception check with advantage. Okay. And with that perception check, can you also kind of give me the, uh, the landscape? Yeah. That's a 20. You see in front of you that each of these warbands are about 20 strong and while they don't appear nearly as martial as the hoplites that have mustered they are brutally savage looking and they take up an enormous pathway that sweeps very steep down you're at the top here at this gate and this steep 
path down towards them just opens up into city streets and large buildings with ruined columns and partially destroyed rooftops and chaos. And you said that this is Hoplite Elites? Yep. Okay, so that's plus eight to attack? Yep. Okay. As these warbands come into view, Gron is going to bark out an order to the Hoplites in his unit. Close the distance and attack. They look to you and with your commanding lead, your unit jumps into the fray. Go ahead and give me an attack roll. That's a 23 to hit. That will hit. You're rolling d20 plus power. 13. Okay, and I'm rolling there the warband's toughness against that. That is only a 7 plus 4. That is a hit. And Gron, your unit, with you and Califex at the lead, inflicting the first casualty of this battle as the Ikroans take to the offensive, inflicting two casualties against this warband with their righteous smite. Yeah. Fuck yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Something about Gron saying yeah that just mm, fucking (laughs) pumps me up. Next on the initiative on a 21, Gron, you see in the distance ahead of you, maybe one or two units away from the one that you had just engaged with, a large foreboding figure stand atop a ruined pile of columns, a pale and brutally fierce minotaur riding an enormous dire wolf. Again, another familiar figure from the bridge. They shout out in Minotaur, The fools! They run to their death, and we will sage in their blood! As he casts at range towards another one of the Ikroan units near yours, inflicting a casualty on a nearby... On a nearby... A Crowan unit that is just now passing the threshold of this open gate. The rest of the units of this horde, rallied by his cry, are going to take to the offensive as well. Next in the initiative, Gron, the one you are engaged with, is going to make an attack against you. But how about a 90? Um, yes. Okay. You see, although trained and mighty, these Ikroan elite hoplites, now in the fray, taking these savage hits from this Minotaur warband. They are going to roll power against your toughness, and they got a 22. Oh, and I roll toughness. I and you it. roll toughness. That's a nat 20 plus 6. Oh, shit. Nice. Okay. And, Ooh, I was worried for a second there. Yeah, and the... Elites hold their ground against this reckless attack. Gron, I am also going to need you to... Me? Yeah, so against Gron, you would take a bit of damage here. You take 10 slashing damage. As you are caught in this fray from all sides. Califex also taking... Not as much, but some damage as well. Are you all right, brother? We have only just begun, brother. This is nothing we can't handle. Yes. Okay. I am now going to muster forces for the rest of the Acroans, who are not captained. Great. Gron, you see charging out of the gate, flanking you. To your left and right, two more forces. One of them that had just taken the casualty from this other warband leader, this wolf rider, and the two of them begin engaging with other warbands. Make those rolls. Okay. Okay. And power versus toughness. You can see that one of them is able to inflict a casualty against this warband, and another one is holding fast but unable to cut through this large force. Gron, you can just tell from the onset of this that the horde has won thus far 
based perhaps solely on numbers. Their units are much larger than the Akroans, and they're very tough, but you can see that they aren't, in their savagery, perhaps hitting as consistently brutally as you've seen other Minotaurs hitting. Can I roll insight on the Minotaurs? Sure. Okay. That's only a four. Okay. Yeah, you can't tell much. Okay. They are they are recklessly attacking. Some of them are invoking Mogus. Many of them are screaming out about slaying their enemies. Uh, as we go to Aesrius, the champion of Aroes, with his Pegasus, you see a small number of other Crowan hoplites also taking wings into the air and begin flying overhead as this battle unfolds. You also see Gron above you, flying overhead, wrapped in wind and lightning, Polymede herself, a one-woman unit, casting lightning bolts and other spells down towards the ensuing horde. You can see she is able to inflict another casualty on the warband you are engaged with, as you can hear her shout out, We must break their line! Divide their numbers! And we go from there back to clicks. No, this is, this is some trick. It can't be. My men, my men buried you weeks ago. How? And no guilt gets no mercy and i will attack <laughs> nice okay amazing so he's gonna roll your initiative is pretty low for the sake of this this is all gonna play out within one round of the battle probably so clicks go ahead and re-roll your initiative this is just against lyocar okay 18 like to think i attack him first <laughs> considering <laughs> He only got a 16. You beat, you beat his initiative. You can see he goes to draw for a weapon, and you beat him to it. Go ahead. All right. Is this is this like a surprise attack or no? Conditionally, no. Does a 17 hit? A 17 will hit. As I hit him, I'm going to turn back into clicks, obviously. I just do six damage since I don't have sneak attack on this. I'll attack with my offhand. Okay. 19. That also hits. Extra two, so eight damage total. Okay. Hope you didn't stat block this guy for uh, three fucking players. <laughs> That'll we'll be rough. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, I'll be there in a minute. Just kind of punch at some walls. <laughs> Great. You see he staggers back as you drive your weapons into him. <gasps> I see now. You. You still don't get it. He takes his hand, he holds it into the air, and summons into existence a glistening Damascus longsword. And as he does that, a spectral blue armor apparates around his form. You now look upon the visage of Lyukar the warrior. I have worked my whole life to be more than those pathetic savages in the grasslands. All the power I have gained I did on my own, with no help or want for any of the gods above. Let me teach you this lesson. So he swings with this sword. A 24 total. Probably going to hit. On the first attack, and on the second, a 16 total. Also will hit. On both of these strikes, you see this magical blade swing into you with martial prowess. A total of 12 damage, and I need you to go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. Okay. 19 plus 4 is 23. You can feel a terrible, almost choking sensation begin to overtake your body, but you overcome it and are not stunned as this blade slashes into you. That is his turn. It's back to you. Clix is going to first say, on your own? What about the bodies and broken bones of the people that have served you? 
you'd be nothing without them. And then I'm going to, as a reaction, cast Hellish Rebuke using my Phoenix Feather Armlet. Hell <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. So go ahead and Hell make yeah. me a deck save. <laughs> okay. So it rolled against my dice tray and was going to be an 18, but then bounced off and is actually a 2. That ain't going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and use all my charges. Hell yeah. Holy shit. 32. Jesus. Very cool. That is absolutely amazing. As you invoke this armlet for the first time, a wave of fire bursts forth in your form, and Lyukar staggers back again, looking hurt. You still don't get it. I speak of a power that few men can achieve. The greatest power is not that of any god above. It is not what they are capable of doing themselves, but it is what the people of this world who follow them do in their name are capable of. That is power. And so I played that part. He, holding his side from the hellish rebuke in one hand, steps forward. But it's your turn. Attacking. Go for it. It's a nat 20 on the dice. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Six plus four. Seventeen. And I will go ahead and make my offhand attack. Fifteen plus four is nineteen. That'll also hit. Extra three. Taking this damage, you see he twirls his longsword and a blast of fire. He also, using Hellish Rebuke, <laughs> Okay. Washes over you. Go ahead and make a deck save. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. No, no, no. It didn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. That's a five or a six, I mean, total. <laughs> Clicks, you take another 11 fire damage. Oy vey. He stands holding his ground, pointing his sword towards you. Those bodies were a tool. Like, I wield this one before you. You see, nothing would stop me from climbing that ladder. Not even the mistake. The one mistake of my past. The one weakness that I showed towards that servant woman. No, I would not be cursed by that. This, this power, it will be your undoing. You are nothing to me. As he swings in two more times. That is only a nine. Nope. On the first hit, and a nat twenty. Ah, seconds. that no, that misses. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dammies? Clicks. You take an additional twelve. You gotta damage. be fucking getting out of here already with this. Okay. How you looking, Clicks? I'm looking hurt. I, I've got fight left in me, but I'm hurt. <laughs> yep. Yep. Clicks as he drives this brutal sword. Slashing through you, you catch a glimmer beneath his spectral armor and his robes with the jewel that you saw from your vision. He is still wearing it, even now. It's your turn. So I'd like to disengage and then hide somewhere in the room. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Hold on. I'm not going to disengage. Okay. I'm going to instead throw on my Shroud of Nyx. Then I am okay. going to... Exit his area. Okay. He can go he ahead and attack me. Uses his reaction to attack you. A seven plus six will miss. That's the math, and that does miss, so never mind. Cool. Okay. And then I will use my bonus action to uh, hide. Very cool. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. With advantage, because I got that fucking shroud on, boy. That is correct. Probably not going to need it. The first roll is a total of 23. Let's just see what else we get. Hell yeah. Yeah, 23. Hell yeah. Clicks, you see this room is lavish. A fine four-post bed, tapestries, and fine paintings and small sculptures and various things adorning this room. In other words, a number of things which, in your prowess, make very good things to hide behind. Is that the rest of your turn? I would like to just make sure that I'm hiding anywhere as close as humanly possible within striking distance if possible. 
I'm just going to say, on that roll, you hide under the bed. Which he is near, right? Which he is near. Okay, cool. Okay. On his go, he looks around. You can see he clutches his side with his off hand. He is injured, and he says, You don't understand. For many months, we met in secret. And as I lay beside her, once a voice spoke out to me in the shadow of that night. It said... It said this, this will be your undoing. For all your power, by your own blood, shall you leave this mortal world with nothing. And since I have done everything in my power to make sure that wretched prophecy not come to pass, cruel fate be damned. He looks around with disadvantage, striking out at the air, seemingly unable to find where you have hidden. Clicks, you can see as he swings out, a odd sort of aura emanate. I will show you the extent of this power, bodies or not. I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Fucking wisdom. This is ungood. All right, I need these. I need this dice to, to do me a favor. I have nothing on wisdom. It's a two. <laughs> Hide, disguise, trick and sneak and stealth. I will show you real power. Clicks, you succumb to the confusion spell. At the start of each of your turns, I'm going to have you roll a d10 to see what happens. That is his turn. Clicks, it is now your turn. Go ahead and roll me that d10. One. Not sure how often that's good. Roll a d4 for me. Four. You... You're doing this while hidden, so roll me a stealth check. Cool. It was a nat 20, so that's 30 stealth. Oh my god, insane. So, in in your state of sudden, odd, and twisted confusion in your mind you move in a random direction and begin leaving this room back into the courtyard from which you entered however wildly you are still (laughs) hidden while you're doing this so he cannot use his reaction to swing out and attack you so you are now confused but in the courtyard Go ahead and re-roll me that wisdom save as your turn comes to an end. Thank God. 18? An 18 just passes. Thank God. You come out of this momentary confusion in the courtyard. And we go back to Lyukar, who is still in the room. He stays at range, uh, crossing into your view on the other side of this entryway holding out and pointing his sword towards you. You will not be my end. And he uses Eldritch Blast. A four plus seven is not going to do it, I don't think, as a bolt of Eldritch energy streaks forth from his sword towards you, hitting one of the nearby statues. It's back to clicks. He is about 20 feet away from you. All right, I'm going to move 10 feet forward to get a little closer to him, and I'm going to roar. Okay. You invoke your daunting roar. It's a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom I'll saving throw. I'll play the DC after. Okay. He does roll a total of 14. All right, DC is 16. Okay, he fails. So he is feared. What do you sound like or say as you invoke this roar? Something we have not heard from clicks in quite a while, and under very different circumstances. Hold on. Flashback to the last time. We yeah, we're against the Cyclops, that's Cyclops. right. Cyclops. I think it'd be more like just a very low foreboding... But that was spicy. Very cool. Following this roar, he staggers back, feared as you. And I'm just going to go for it. Go for it. So that was my bonus action, so I will use my action to attack. And in spite of his fear, I miss, because that is a six. That will miss as he staggers back and parries your attack with his blade. He is going to make his attacks against you with disadvantage now, because you have successfully feared him. (laughs) First attack 
with disadvantage were a nat 20 and a 4 <laughs> missing. Second attack, 13, which fails. fails. Correct. His two strikes are clouded by his fear of you. No. No. He's going to move back and away from your threatened area towards the door behind him. Out of the bed chamber, you see that there's another door that he begins moving towards. Attack of opportunity. Go for it. 19. That will hit. Five damage. Very cool. He staggers as he retreats a full 30 feet away from you and into another chamber beyond this bed chamber. Clicks, that's your turning in. Going after him. Okay. How do you move towards him as he retreats away from you? If he's still inside, I'm just going to charge towards his back. Okay. You charge towards him and through this other doorway, this other passageway, and find a lavish bath room with a large bath set into fine stonework surrounded by various columns. Make your attacks. 16. That just misses. Fuck. Okay. The next one does too. Nat one. Even in his fear... You see his instinct as a warrior kicks in and dodges away from your strikes as he retaliates. That's a 15 plus 6 on the first attack. Yep, hits. And the second attack, I believe, will miss on a 14. Both miss. Just miss. Clicks, we jump right back to you. Gonna keep wailing at him. 17. 17 just hits. I know his AC now. Yeah, that is his <laughs> Power AC. Power of deduction. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, oh, I have, to, I have to roll the damage. That's right. Eight. Okay. All right, let's see what we do in the offer. Uh, ten. That misses. That will miss. You can see from the first impact, bloody the Lyukar manages to parry again your offhand. Look around you, Kerr. Look at everything I have built. I will not let you come in here and take it from me. As he swings back, as he points his blade again towards you, you can see tendrils of dark energy erupt from the ground around you, and I need you to make a strength saving throw. Strength. Oh, thank God. Okay, 19. That will pass. You can see these necrotic arms lashing out towards you. You take a total of four necrotic damage, but you do not succumb to these tendrils of spectral necrotic energy trying to surround you. That is his action. Clicks, how do you respond? I respond by lunging for him, sword and dagger ready. 23. That'll hit. Nine damage. And then the offhand. Uh, 14, it doesn't hit. Clicks, you can see that he is bloody. The hellish rebuke, your continued aggressive assault. He is nearing death's door as we go back to his turn, running out of resources and no other way out of this chamber. You can see he has no choice but to attack. As he makes this final stand, are you below half your health? Absolutely. Yes. The sword swings out, sensing the blood of its enemy, makes the first roll with advantage. A 19 plus 6 hitting. Second roll, I'll go ahead and make that. A 10 plus 6 also hitting. All right. The first one. All right, well, fuck me. That's a 1 on the dice. That's only 5. 5 slashing damage. And this next one is... I will make that five by using uncanny dodge. You uncannily dodge away from these now frenzied and dire attacks. Okay. I'm I'm looking hurt myself. I mean I have been. I'm definitely hurting. Your go. Alright. Just gonna just gonna do my best here and just attack him with my short sword and my dagger. 18 on the short sword attack. Hits. Another nine damage, and then I will do my offhand. A 19 on the dice will crit. Nice. Which does crit with a dagger. 12, so first roll was trash. Okay. 
And then another five damage, so 14 total. Clicks. Panga yes. picture. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Clicks will look at Layukar for a moment and say, For you, no more words. I will plunge my sword directly into his stomach, and then while holding it, stabilize myself while I quickly wrap around him and behind him and take my dagger and slit his throat open. And then I will hold his head and jam it back so that blood rushes from his gaping wound faster, snuffing out his life as quickly as possible. If he could cry out or scream or speak any final words, they are agonizingly so drowned out by the blood that pours from his wounds. Clicks in a flurry of combat. You slay Lyukar. His body falls into this bathhouse pool, and his blood pours into the water in front of you. What do you do? As he dies, I bring his body slowly down to the floor, and I just sit next to it for a while and contemplate everything that just happened. As Clicks contemplates what just took place here, we cut back to Andromeda. Still in their frenzy, still at the Citadel. Finally, now I've rolled a 16, plus 6 is 22. Excellent. Well, I see magic item of great power and unknown function. I'm going to do what any responsible wizard would do and put it on. You touch this beautiful crown, these weaving and woven golden bands almost themselves looking like brilliant threads crafted together, and immediately you hear a voice. At last, a new hand lay upon thine relic, and the shadow which covers this land shudders at its power. At this turning of the tide, the mighty Polis Akros may lay siege, but all is not lost. Clicks and Gron. From wherever you are, you also hear this voice as it billows across the polis. The god of slaughter's followers draw power from a darker source. Upon this creation's eye, once made whole, shall come the strength of Nyx itself. One which shall draw out that wretched malice and smite it upon this earth. But lo, unbending, they rise from that power, and its dark origin is secret, hidden from my sight. As this goes on, Andromeda, you see from the room rising through the ceiling, Gron and Clix, from your views, the form of Clothis, goddess of destiny, Take shape in the sky, but thine eye shall see its heart, and by the gods of this land, slaughter and victory, forge and storms, and destiny. Your company shall know its face and drive it back into the abyss. Andromeda, you attune to the dormant state of the creation's eye. I shall now send to you. How can I? All right, so melee spell attacks deal an additional d10 force damage, and once for one rest, you can invoke this item and gain a 10 foot aura in which creatures of your choice are blessed within it. Okay, sweet. Uh, yeah, I put it on. I mark all of that that just happened. You also see familiar spectral threads, ones that once first joined you and Gron and Clix, the beginning of all of this, joining this creation's eye and two other distant sources. Okay. Go ahead and roll me Religion or Arcana. Sure. 26, Religion. As you attune to this item, you can immediately sense that it yearns like fate itself to be made complete and these threads point directly towards where the two jewels are 
Alright, I'm going to follow the one that keeps me in the colophon. Okay. Andromeda, you take off following this thread. And we cut back to Gron. Gron, you see this towering female figure, six curling horns and an impossibly long mane of pale, glistening hair that cascades around her, covers her eyes, and spools itself like thread into her spear and into the giant spindle that she carries. The brilliant gold and white robes that adorn her glisten red and green in the spectral imagery of Nyx. That's Clothis, all right. Califex looks to you. Forward! Yes, sir. That's so cute. What do you do? Ron is going to bellow out over the din of this combat. Forward! And enter rage. Hell yeah. Gron, you shout out in rage this command, and you see the elite hoplites around you begin raging at your side. Okay, yeah. We charge into battle, just all screaming at the same time. Awesome. So go ahead and make this attack with advantage. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a 26 to hit. Hell yeah, that hits. And now you're going to add your rage damage to your power roll. 13. They only got a 7. Good. (laughs) Fuck them. (laughs) You cleave into this between your initial onslaught and Aesirius attacking and this now enraged fury. This warband, their numbers are greatly reduced, and now they're going to have to roll a morale check. Otherwise, their numbers will scatter and their unit will be destroyed. That's a nat one. Yes, it is. You managed to destroy this warband. Goodbye. Go home. Leaving an opening, you think, indeed, a way forward. Yes. A way forward. I yell forward again. I'll track that at a different time. That's not 9 o'clock at night in an apartment. Reasonable. Gran reasonably says, forward. (laughs) Gran, you see this large wolf rider minotaur in front of you his force charges to meet yours this is a mounted unit this is not nearly as large as the regular warbands but they look wicked a seeming fell aura surrounding them they're going to charge forward and attack that is <laughs> that's a 28 to hit which oh, God. it's And while they don't attack recklessly, they do have pack tactics with all of the other units that you find yourself in a swath of. So they're rolling power here. That's only a two on the dice, but that is a total of 12. What? 10. They fiercely and brutally ride their direwolves through your charging unit and only inflict a half casualty. How wild is that because of your rage? I didn't realize casualties could be halved. How would I even describe that? It's like you see they cut through with axes and spears and the rage of combat that has ensued here. These wounds would normally incapacitate any normal soldier, but these are not normal. In their rage, through sheer exhilaration, they are able to keep fighting. You can see Gron. One of the nearby Ekroan units getting torn asunder by the warband that they are fighting. They are now going to make a morale check as their numbers begin to dwindle, able to hold their ground even as their allies fall by their sides. That unit holds, but another one is also going to make a morale check, and on only a two, falls. You see Aesirius, this champion of Erois and Polymede flying overhead. The gods stand with us! This will not be our end! Gron, you see in the distance from atop the ruined Temple of Triumph, an unmistakable form. Hargot launching a wicked javelin 
as you hear him shout out. He is hundreds of feet away, and yet his voice billows. Enough of your talk, righteous hero. Today you fall. As he strikes, and you see this champion of Erois knocked from his pegasus and fall through the air. We cut back to Clix. Clix, you heard this rapturous statement from this god as they appeared in the sky. What do you do? Yeah, so Clix is, again, at the ground, the corpse of Lyukar right beside him, and he's starting to feel sorry for himself, starting to feel like he now lacks purpose, but almost miraculously, hears a divine... (laughs) booming voice from Clothis speaking of destiny. And pretty quickly, he stands up and begins searching Lyakar's body for um, for the gemstone that, that it was in his vision. You find it easily. No rolling required. It sits on a necklace, this pale yet brilliant jade gem. I take it from his body and kick him into the pool. Clix, when you touch this stone, you immediately get the flash of images in your mind of a younger Lyukar. You see the events similar to as he tried to tell them to you play out. But you also see as if this stone itself having the retained memories of the one who carried it. A human man in similar counselor's robes gifting Lyukar this stone as Lyukar assumes this counselorship. And you hear Lyukar say, Thank you, Sir Hyksis. I will wear this as a badge of honor. May you enjoy your retirement. All right. Before clicks makes his way back to where he left his party. He will stop in that office, and he'll just cut the Leonin from that tapestry that he saw, and then and then continue on. And then, knowing how wounded I am, I will disguise self as Lahukar to make my way back <laughs> to where I left my party. <laughs> nice. You exit this place, having just slain your father, fulfilling some prophecy as we go to andromedy andromedy is following this thread to presumably where Clix is disguised as lyukar andromedy you make your way out of the citadel and across a covered bridge that extends from one of the bottom structures across and towards a nearby villa and you see the figure of a older but uh noble looking Leonin walking towards you. They appear injured. Andromedy does some mental calculations on their own. Sort of looks down at the ground, disheartened. Clicks, you see Andromedy in the distance ahead of you. If I see Andromedy, I'm going to turn back into myself, knowing that you know someone will recognize me and not. Andromedy, as you sulk at the brief possible sadness that perhaps Clicks was slain. You see him appear before I you. Go, I go over and give him a hug. Oh, Clix, I'm so glad nothing happened to you. He is grievously injured. Something happened to me. <laughs> uh, as part of that hug, <laughs> I'll give you a second level cure wounds. You're oh, getting the good stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're getting the good stuff. Throw it at me. I, I need it. 14, 17 hit points? I believe this is something you'll need. And I hand Andromedy the gem. And I presume he is dead? Clicks just nods his head, doesn't say anything. Do you feel that you still have a purpose in this world? I believe I do. And with that in mind, please lead the way. As you say, friend. I take the gem, I take the crown off my head and try and socket it in where it goes. Andromedy, you take this gem in your hand and even just being near the crown, it floats spinning around your form and landing almost as if meant to be, positioned exactly so on this crown. You feel a slight burst of power as if awakening this artifact is close at hand. 
Nice, nice, nice. For the purposes of this, you don't gain any more benefits, but it does go from a plus one to a plus two focus. Cool. All right, so I guess we head towards where the, the little kerfuffle is happening. Andromedy and Clix now united. You make your way towards the gates of the Colophon, where the ensuing battle has begun. You see the gods overhead themselves becoming enwrapped in divine conflict, as from atop your position, the Colophon itself being high above the rest of Akros, flying overhead from the east, a team of anvil-wrought eagles, as you can hear a familiar voice shout out, Now you all thought that you would just have all of this fun on your own? Gods be damned, I don't think so! <laughs> as Volkos and the flame speakers enter the battle, Gron, you see Volkos firing down with these flame speakers and fiery anvil rots from the sky, these fiery bolts and fireballs immediately cut down another one of these Minotaur warbands, one that was previously injured and engaged with another of the Acroan forces. Yes. Andromedy, you can see from your position, it seems, perhaps, as though your previous dire call has at least reached your allies nearby and billowing, bursting in the distance, Mount Velus erupting in the form of Perforos, charging down the mountains. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is, wow. I'm just trying to paint as big a picture as humanly possible. As we go back to Gran. Gran is surrounded by friends. And enemies. So, Gron fixes his eyes on Hargot and just moves in that direction, attempting to cut through this warband that stands between him and Hargot. All right. Will this be with advantage? Yes. It's 20. That will hit. Make our contested rolls here. Hey, hey. I've got a dirty 20 from toughness on my end. Well, I've got a 27. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you immediately inflict two casualties on this warband. They were previously engaged with other Acroans. They have to roll morale against your 27, which on a 22 is not going to succeed. Their unit crumbles as you are given freedom to move forward towards Hargot. Gran never taking his eyes off of Hargot cuts through this Minotaur warband and continues making his way. You are flanked by other Akroan units as they begin to guide your path and you can see all the while Califex at your side. This is your moment, brother. I know you can do it. We can do it. He nods to you as you charge forward. The wolf riders are going to make uh, an attack against you as you charge away from them. That is a 24 to hit against AC. Go ahead and roll your toughness. 22. Jesus. These wolf riders add 10 to attack and power, and on a 5 on the dice, a 15 is not going to do it. They do not inflict a casualty as you move away from them. You can see... Volkos begins engaging with their mounted unit. Anvil rots from the sky, and dire wolves on the ground begin battling. Now you've done it. Let them have it, Volkos. I will indeed! As he engages, you see Polymede and Orissa, these two flying oracles overhead, engaging as well. Gron, you can see ahead of you numerous other Minotaur warbands begin assembling around this ruined Temple of Triumph. But it seems as though Polymede and Rissa and the other Akroans are trying at least everything they can to cut them off, leaving you a way forward. You can also see climbing up back into the Colophon, a small unit of hoplite scouts 
it seems carrying Aserius out of combat. We go back to Andromeda and Clicks. All right. We can join some of these guys over here? Yes, you can. How would you like to join the fray? So you can join up with either one of these units. You wouldn't be able to move down to where Gron and Califex are right now. And these two units are just like normal soldiers? Yeah, they appear to be standard hoplite infantry. Or you could just stick together as yourselves and try and move through another way without necessarily joining with anyone. It's up to you. What do you think, Jeppy? I mean, Clicks would probably prefer to sneak and try to get a jump. Okay. I think we should make our way in as quietly as possible. I think we can get through cutting through all the noise undetected. Perhaps you can, but I am somewhat conspicuous. Clicks will hand the Shroud of Nyx to Andromeda. Nice, okay. I will put a hand up, looking up at Polymede and Orissa, and now Volkos, who's joined this battle, and gesturing at them, say to Clicks. I think I need to be seen as a leader in this moment, but I trust that I can meet you at the Temple of Triumph. You will see me there. Right at your side, friend. Aww. Incredible. Kitten comfort, kitten friendship. Absolutely incredible. Clicks, in this moment, as you choose to stand by your friend in the heat of battle, go ahead and make me a religion check with advantage. Okay. Okay, first roll was a 19, so I don't think it's going to make... Yeah, 19. Okay. The feeling, or in your own words, the lack of feeling that you've been carrying for a long time. After the events that just happened, maybe, you don't feel that weight quite as heavy anymore. And in the far distance, on the horizon, you hear the crash of thunder. Very well. All right, I'm going to join up with this unit right in the front. The two of you, seeing all of these figures, the oracles, the champions, and the gods themselves, join up with this Ekroan infantry. They look towards you, knowing who you are and the purpose you have. One of them shouts out as they move towards a nearby warband, Voice of Destiny, what are your orders? Have courage. Do not let doubt enter your minds. We are meant to succeed. Destiny itself smiles upon us. Onward, onward to victory. And as I'm joining these guys, I'm going to cast haste. Okay. Nice. Very cool. Okay. Speedy kick cast haste. Part of the troop. Get ready for fucking zoomies, folks. <laughs> this haste envelops your entire unit. They charging forward, run, run faster, and then through this magic, lightning fast, fate-driven, meet the warband in front of them, and they're going to get two actions. Yeah, so let's let's attack first. See how that goes. Um, does a 15 hit these Minotaurs? A 15 just hits. All right, cool. Then let's see if we do some damage to them. Ooh, eh, probably not with a nine. Well, we'll see what they roll. That is an eight plus four. So the first attack, unable to cut down any of these minotaurs. Okay. All right, for our second action, I'm going to say let's defend. So they form the shield wall, they come out, they stab, and then they get right back behind the shield wall. Absolutely. You see this enormous swath of round shields plant into the ground. That was Clix and Andromedy. Gron, you see Clix and Andromedy in the battle in the distance. Join up with one of the infantry and engage one of the nearby warbands. It is your turn. About time they got here. So Gron can see a clear path to the temple now, and he's going to, again, order forward. Take the temple, and we're going in. You and Califex lead your forces straight towards the ruined Temple of Triumph. Your allies all around you, giving you cover as they engage with the other warbands that you can see. Your force charges in their rage through the broken archways and shattered columns that were standing majestically. 
the last time you saw this place. And on the inside, you see horror. As Hargoth's own warband, the one that you were exiled from, seethes over an enormous mountain of corpses. You immediately get a lay of this situation as plainly all of those innocent people who tried to seek refuge in this place became victims trapped by it. You look up and see Hargot far above overlooking this scene, staring directly down at you. Gron bellows, What have you done? Guy's here to attack on my level. Gonna attack him. I'm gonna attack this war band that I was once a part of. And it's as simple as that. You see Hargot looking down on this scene, laughing. <laughs> In my rage, I'm attacking recklessly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a 24 to hit. Yeah. That will absolutely hit. And that's a 26 power roll. These guys are tough, but a three on the dice is not going to do it with their Oof. total of 12 tough against your power. You immediately, in your rage, inflict a casualty against Hargot's own warband as they quickly mount to try and meet your offensive. But can I roll insight on these guys? Sure. That's a nat 20 plus one. Nice. Nice. Amazing. What are you trying to discern? I'm trying to discern whether they are behaving normally for what I know of them, or if they are taken by some sort of deeper darkness. On the Nat 20, I'm just going to flat out say that you always remembered them to be vicious, savage people. But in this moment, you look at this horrifying scene within this Colosseum, and you know that even in their own instinctive savagery, that this is only being amplified and expounded upon by this dark force. It isn't that it's one controlling the other. It's that it's one enabling the other. Okay. Gron, with that in your mind, we go back outside the Colosseum, where the other warbands and the other Legion forces engage. Andromedy and Clicks, you can see Polymede begin conjuring up an enormous called lightning as it shoots down, striking the forces that you are engaged with, throwing many of them onto the ground as lightning strikes all around them. She looks down towards you and nods. In your mind, you hear her voice. The gods are with us. We follow you. And behind you, you can also see Volkos, now engaged with this seeming wolf king of the wastes of a minotaur. Come up, Volkos. As powerful as the flame speakers are, you can see they land their fire bolts and other spells against this force, and unyielding, the wolf riders continue their assault on the flame speakers. Well, oh, this one's real big. We might need some backup as some of the flame speakers are cut down in the fray. After that, you see the warbands in front of you continue their assault. Uh, they do this at a minus five because we're defending. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, they're recklessly attacking, but that minus five is going to come in handy. Wow. A three and a nine plus eight minus five, twelve... Won't beat a 20. And then we're going to take our reaction. Hell yeah. To counterattack. Because that's the special thing these guys can do. That's their special ability. Yeah, these martially trained Crowan soldiers standing their guard, counterattacking when the opening arrives. Go ahead and roll. All right, come on, dice. Uh, you get advantage. They just attacked rec- recklessly. Oh, right. They attacked recklessly. Oh, come on now. <laughs> we got a one and a five here. Oh, man. You really don't want to use any portents either, do you? I don't know what's going to happen yeah, exactly. today. Of course. Uh, yeah, so it's just a wash. 
yeah, you can see the, the forces are striking out against each other. You can see people are getting injured on both sides, but no one really able to land any casualties or killing blows in this instance. Now it's your turn. Andromeda, you can also see from around the Temple of Triumph, you see two more warbands begin mustering and charging towards this front line. Okay, so I guess we'll we'll try and take care of this one that we've been fighting. I don't know what the fuck is up with these die rolls. That's a two and a three. All right, I guess we'll try and do this one more time, taking our second attack. Okay. That's better. Does an 18 hit? An 18 will hit. Okay, cool. Hopefully we can do damage. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a 21 power roll. I've only got a 14 over here. All right, cool. We, we hurt him some. You inflict a casualty. If it weren't for Polymede herself doing an additional casualty, they will now have to make a morale check. They do roll in at 20, however, and hold their okay. ground. Okay. So that was Andromedy. Basically everybody else important. We go back inside the Temple of Triumph to Gran and Califex. You see Hargot high above you laughing at this chaos as it unfolds. Do I see a path to him? Just go ahead and give me a perception check. That one. Uh, Califex will go ahead and give you advantage. Twelve. You think you could make one? All right. Well, I don't know what he would do, but I can put Califex in charge and say, keep fighting. I'll deal with Hargot. And I'm going to detach from this unit and try to make my way up to where he is. Hell yeah. Califex looks at you with a complete look of confidence. I will always have your back, brother. And I yours, brother. As he assumes the command of this infantry, and you charge towards Hargot. You are going to take an opportunity attack from the warband. They're attacking recklessly. That is an 11 plus 6. That hits. This is 12 half to 6 slashing damage. My rage goes with me, right? It does. So you can see your infantry behind you, now led by Califex. They're no longer raging, but now Califex can add all of his abilities to the unit. So we'll see what happens there. Hope he's got some cool scout tricks. Yeah, I mean, he's going to sneak attack is what he's going to do. So Andromeda, you and Clix, looking across the battlefield, see giants and other ogres and giant folk beginning to prepare their heavy boulders and other ranged devices to throw not only at the flame speakers who appear to be in combat themselves against the wolf riders, but as well as Polymede and the other oracles circling around overhead who have been thus far able to provide quite a bit of support to the ground troops. You watch as this large dire wolf riding minotaur, this pale minotaur and his foul, twisting horns charge at the anvil wrought eagles, leaping into the sky, manages to knock Volkos and the one that he is riding and into the streets. For the other horde units, the minotaurs that you are currently engaged with, Andromedy, are going to make their attacks against you and your unit. Okay. And they are doing this recklessly. That's an 18 plus 8 on their attack. Mm. Yeah, no it isn't. It's a 4. Okay. Invoking the portent, that attack misses. And, and we're going to counterattack. Awesome. Go for it. Uh, that's an 18 for us. That will hit their AC. Go ahead and make your power roll. <laughs> Oh, I rolled so bad. I have a feeling you're going to be fine. Really? Because we only got a 10. They only got a 3 plus 4, so... Okay, we, we, we hit them. You successfully inflict another casualty, and I'm going to go ahead and make a morale roll for this unit. They do hold their morale, but you can see that their numbers are beginning to dwindle in front of you as you engage. I'm also going to make the attack against you and clicks as part of being in the middle of this fray. Against you, that's going to be a 10 plus 6. That misses. And against clicks, that is going to be a 19 plus mod. Yeah, that'll hit. So that on clicks is going to be... 
Okay, clicks, you take 14 slashing damage. You gotta be shitting me. Can clicks take reactions? Uh, yeah. As part of this? Because uncanny dodge. Let's do exactly that. I use my reaction to use uncanny dodge. I'm gonna take seven damage. Thank you very much. Very cool. Glad I thought of that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Gron, as you charge up towards Hargot, behind you, you can see Califex and Hargot's own warband engaging, (coughs) unable to inflict any casualties against the Hoplites now led by Califex. The others outside, you see Andromedy and Clix swarming around where many of the flame speakers had fallen towards the ground. Andromeda above you, you see Polymede still in the sky. Look down towards you as a message enters your mind. The flame speakers need your aid. And she she continues her call lightning down towards the group that you are engaged with, seeing if she can finish them off. You see lightning streaking down from the sky past the massive forms of the gods in the air around all of this. And after their morale check, you see Andromedy, the warband you are engaged with, disbands and is no more. Oh, okay, great. We go to uh, Andromedy, your unit, and clicks beside you. I know, like, space is sort of abstract here, but... Is this sort of area where Volkos and the Flame Speakers are within 120 feet of me? As far as for the sake of casting a spell, uh, go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Sure. 22. What do you want to try and do? Basically, I'm trying to figure out what level I'd need to cast Fog Cloud at to ah. cover most of the area. Okay. And give them maybe a chance to regroup and retreat. Yeah. On that Arcana check, I'll say you think just casting it at, at its regular level would be enough. Okay. Because you are technically adjacent to the area that they are fighting in. All right. So then I'll just do a first level fog cloud and try and just provide these guys with some cover. Okay. You lay down this fog cloud in the area all around you and your allies. I'm going to say that's going to give the Wolf Riders uh, disadvantage on their next attacks. Anything else? I don't know. Do you have any plans, Jeffy? Because you're part of this group, too. I don't want to be unilaterally making decisions. I'm following your orders. Looks like we cut through another one. What's next? All right. So I'm going to go after that mentor group that's trying to hew in the flame speakers and perhaps, again, try and give them more leeway to escape or regroup. All right. They didn't reckless attack, right? No. So this is just a normal roll. Nope, that's not going to do it. Two plus something. So that is your unit. You can hear Volkos in the distance. Now's our chance. Use the cover. Begin to move his forces with the help of your fog cloud. Very good. They're going to take... They are still going to take an opportunity attack from the force that they are engaged with. This will be with disadvantage because of fog cloud. Two on the dice. They are going to miss. And you see the flame speakers through the fog begin to pull back. Great. Okay. We go back to the top of the initiative where Gron has just begun charging towards Hargot. Oh. And so, in a similar fashion where where we zoomed in on Clix and Lyukar facing off against each other, now we see Gron versus Hargot keeping the same initiative. Gron, you are up first. He is above you, kind of at the highest row of these stone bleachers, as he looks out past the ruined ceiling of this coliseum, out over the enormous battle that has erupted over the entirety of Akros as you approach. So I'm going to climb my way up the steps of this ruined coliseum. I want to climb up so that I'm as close to him as I can get. Okay. And so I can look into his eyes. As you approach, he does not turn and instead continues laughing as he looks down upon your allies, the numerous hoplites and warbands engaged in combat. Do I see the ruby? Uh, With his back towards you, go ahead and give me a perception check. Nine. You do not. 
Hargot. Returned at last, the coward. He says, still facing away from you. Fate has twice caused us to part ways. And now it has brought us back together again. It seems you have finally accepted your end at the blade of my axe. He turns around ready to attack. I'm going to charge towards him. and uh, Get him. Hell yeah. I'm going to charge towards him, horns forward, and as I get close to him, enter my rage. Fuck yeah. He'll take three points of fire damage right off the bat. Here we fire we As go. the rage of Mogus burns in my eyes. That's what we came here for tonight. This is, yeah. this is what it's all about. I have completely lost control of myself, and I'm going to charge at him and attack recklessly. Fuck yeah. I don't know if I needed to do that. That's a 23 to hit. That hits, for sure. <laughs> okay. 14 bludgeoning damage with my maul. Hell yeah. You go in for this first opening blow, this body blow, and it lands, and it lands true. He looks down at you, his form larger than yours. <sighs> That's it, coward. No. I am close. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gonna hit him again. 23 again. That also hits. This time it doesn't hit. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> nope, too high. Yeah. <laughs> this time it's an 18 bludgeoning damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Oi, vey. Very cool. It's almost like you're upset. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that Hargot brings it out of me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, these opening swings, landing. You can see the obvious injuries on his form, and yet he stands still as if he has not been moved at all and now it's his turn let me show you what rage really looks like as he enters his frenzied rage oh he's one of those he is one of those you see the malice and frenzy from his form swing with his brutal great axe towards you he gets advantage (laughs) His first attack, a 16 plus 8. Yep. I'm going to do these separately. This first swing coming down towards you through the sky. That is 14 slashing damage, half to 7. But an additional 6 necrotic damage as this horrific great axe plunges into you, searing and burning on impact. His second swing... It's going to be a 15 plus 8 for an additional 12 slashing damage, half to 6. No necrotic damage after the first swing, it seems. And using his bonus action in a frenzied rage, he attacks a third time. Um, Wouldn't he have had to use his bonus action to enter the frenzied rage? Nope. Starting when you choose this, you can go into a frenzy when you rage. For the duration, you can make a single attack as a bonus action. Yes, but raging consumes a bonus action. Fuck off. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Uh, fine. Rules lawyer me out of that. Scala, attorney at rules law. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. Gron, that is back to you. All right. He hit me pretty hard, and I'm pretty startled by that necrotic damage. Didn't expect that. Plan right now is just to keep hitting him, though. Hell yeah. Gonna attack not recklessly this time. Okay. My first attack. It's gonna miss the 11. I want to use a bonus action to... Gron in the moment is going to use the Rage of Mogus to invoke Wrathful Smite. Okay. And he's going to attack. Go for it. With his maul. And 15. 15 misses. Do you want it to be a 16? I feel like there are bigger things going on this day. Okay. I still have plenty of hit points. If it gets dicey, I can make any of your die rolls a 16. (laughs) Dicey. (laughs) cool oh <laughs> no not cool no not, pun intended not no cool pun intended. not cool well anyways it's his turn again what's wrong already lost your nerve uh he swings at you he invokes his reckless attack making these swings with advantage now that is a 19 plus mod on the first one Jesus christ yeah that is 10 slashing halved to 5 and 4 additional necrotic damage. Second swing with advantage is a nat 20. Okay, a 12 and a 1. I guess that washes out on these d12s. That's 19 slashing halved to 9. And with the bonus action, the frenzied attack. 
That is a 16 plus 8. He does not miss, does he? We're rolling real hot right now. <laughs> and that's another 9 halved to 4. You can see this brutal, frenzied wave of attacks as he slashes in with this great axe. Coward! Fight back! It is your turn. Okay. Gron is really hurt. He's not about to drop, but he's more hurt than he's been in a while. And he spits out a tooth, and he looks up at Hargot and says, Our people are locked in eternal battle. The struggle defines us, but the darkness within you runs deeper. What drives you? With such grand words, coward, that I care not for. I slay my enemies in the name of the God of Slaughter and nothing else. The God of Slaughter whispers in my ear as well. You'd strike down one of your own? You, coward, are not one of us. Gron is taken right back to that day that he was abandoned in the wasteland with Califex cowering by his side. Hargot said something to that effect that day as well, and Gron has grown a lot since then. And Gron's gonna straighten up and swing right back at Hargot, the anger again burning in his eyes. Hell yeah. That's 27 to hit. Absolutely hits. That's 17 bludgeoning damage. Cool. So my Wrathful Smite deactivated, failed my concentration check. I'm going to re-invoke it, so that is two psychic damage. Uh-huh. And, and he's got to make a Wisdom saving throw. What does your Wrathful Smite look like? When my Maul connects with his body, my eyes, alight with the Rage of Mogus, connect directly with his. And I lock on unblinkingly. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Is this against Charm or Fear? This is fear. Okay, cool. You can see that you invoke this smite. He takes this damage. You can see his mind would reel. However, because of his mindless rage, he cannot be feared while in this state. And he looks back directly at you unfazed. Well, shit. That usually works. I'm gonna hit him again. Awesome. It's 26 to hit. Hell yeah. 18 bludgeoning damage. Get used to this dice roll. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Gron, you can see he's starting to show some wear, but in this horrible, frenzied rage, it's almost driving him farther into this state as he makes his attacks. He is continuing his reckless attacks here. 15? 15? Misses. That's a 12 plus 8 on the second... That's going to hit. I'll just go ahead and roll the third. That is another nat 20. That's bullshit. Do you want me to make it a 16? I don't know. He could drop me this turn. Okay, it's a 16. It's not a nat 20. Crit negated. Andromedy, in the distance, you see Gron taking these relentless, frenzied beatings from this minotaur. You see a swing that would surely strike him down. As you are standing atop the Temple of Triumph, this blow about to come down and hit you in a vital spot, you feel the gentle tugging of the threads of fate around your body shift you ever so slightly out of the way so that your head was not split open by this vicious axe. So first attack, that is only going to be a six halved to three slashing and four necrotic damage. And then the second attack, regular attack, that's another fucking one. That's another five halved to two. Looking down at you, he says, Had enough of your worthless existence yet, coward. It's your turn. My existence means more than you could ever know. And I'm no coward. Hell yeah. How's Hargot doing? Go ahead and give me an insight check. No, no, no. That's a four. In his frenzied state, you can see the clear and many wounds on his form, but beyond those, he is hard to gauge. I'm going to close my eyes for an instant. Gron reflects on the complicated relationship he has with Mogus and just searches for some connection, some way forward here. 
because Gran is still skeptical that this is really just Mogus pitting two of his own followers against each other. It just doesn't, mm. it, something doesn't feel right here. Mm -hmm. And Gran's looking for a message. Awesome. Go ahead and roll religion with advantage. Ten. Okay. You still your mind. As you go to make your first attack, you hear, in all of the noise and chaos of the scene, a simple yet savage roar skies. In the wake of this roar, Gran's eyes shoot open again with the fire of his rage and invoking Wrathful Smite. Gran's going to make this turn count because he thinks it might be the last. 25 to hit. Hell yeah, hits. 14 bludgeoning damage. Cool. And another two psychic damage. Okay. And again, lock eyes with Hargot. I'm assuming the Frighten just doesn't hold again. Immune washes right over him. Okay. Brown's going to attack again. 22 to hit. That hits. 13 bludgeoning damage. Gron is just wailing away at Hargot's unmoving body. Looking back at Hargot, seeing the brutal amount of damage that he has taken by your hand as he stands stalwart against your presence. He continues attacking recklessly. That is a uh, 14 plus 8 on the first. A 3 and a 2 on the second. Not going to do it. A 9 plus 8, 17. That'll do it. These two attacks, the first one with this necrotic edge of his great axe is going to be 8 halved to 4 slashing, an additional 4 necrotic, and now the second swing that landed is another 8 halved to 4 slashing. And we're in single digits. We're back to Gron. When will it be enough? When Akros has fallen, what then? Why do you do this? Give me another religion check with advantage. Ooh, that's a 16. On the die. Gron, as you speak these words, who are you speaking them to? Gron is beaten down, just asking these questions out into the air around him, not really expecting Hargot to answer. And even if Hargot did answer, it doesn't seem like it would make that much of a difference now. Gron would like to know the answer then. You speak these words out pitilessly, mercilessly. Hargot looks before this scene. If the destruction of this place, this world, comes at the price of our own lives, it is a worthy and just price to see the deaths of our enemies. But as he says this, you can plainly see behind him in the sky, Mogus and Erois at each other's throats. And on that roll, you know that what Hargot's words echo are not the full picture of the displays and the works and the sources of darkness and evil at hand here. You gain another piety with Mogus as you watch the gods battle and the ability to use your blinding spine. Great. Your words are not those of Mogus. Your words are not those of the god of slaughter. Your mind is clouded by a darker evil. Again, Gron's eyes flash open with the fire of the rage of Mogus, invoking blinding smite. And I'm going to attack him. Oh yeah. Once more. Twice more, really. <laughs> 26 to hit. That absolutely hits. 13 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then that is blinding smite. So that's 3d8 radiant. Okay. So another 13 radiant damage. Woo! And a constitution saving throw against 15. Hell yeah. That 13, that 13 not halved from his rage and with... Oh, this is so good. With a 7 Plus five, he fails his con save. Yes! There it is. Wow. The rage of this blinding smite from your whole form as it erupts this flash of red blinding light, you strike into him and 
he is now blinded. No! What is this? What is this? For the first time, he begins to reel at your assault, even in his frenzied rage. Does a 17 hit? A 17 just hits. Ooh, that's great. Okay. Good news. 15 bludgeoning damage. For the first time since you engaged against Hargot, he's starting to look extremely worn as he reels back from this blinding smite. Now blinded, Hargot swings furiously and recklessly towards you. You do not know his words. You do not know his will. He would see us all burn if it meant his enemies along with us. Swinging recklessly but blind, these are flat rolls. That is a 8 plus 8 on the first swing. 16 just hits. Just hitting. Let me just go ahead and roll all three of these. That's a natural 19 on the second swing. And an 11 plus 8 on the third. In his blinded fury, and Gron unyielding against him, you take all three attacks. I hope he does less than eight damage total. Okay, well, so far, <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even fucking kidding. That's that's two on the D12. So six halved to three slashing plus one on the D6 necrotic. Still doesn't bode well. That is another three on the D12 plus four seven halved to three slashing from the third. It's, and then it's impossible. I'm down to one before this last hit. These are such low rolls, and a four plus four halved to four yeah. on the third. Swinging wildly, Gron even standing your ground against him after just unleashing this blinding smite. His blows, these furious, malicious swings, cut into your form. Andromedy, from the distance, you see this flurry of, of action as Gron engaged with Hargot, and then a moment later, a flash of light, and then only one form remaining atop the Temple of Triumph. Gron, you fall unconscious. The last thing you see, Hargot Bloodhorn towering over your now crippled form, and a voice shouting it's behind you, No, brother! As Caliphex leaps to your aid, running, using his full movement, and his bonus action, as a cunning action, he's able to charge up the side of the Colosseum. Gron, you awake as Califex lays hands upon your injured form, bringing you back up with ten health, but immediately takes three attacks from Hargot. He is still blinded. And so, Gron, you awake to see Califex having jumped to your aid, now take these three raging, blinded attacks. First attack, just landing. These fucking D12s. How do you get anything higher than a four on this thing? <laughs> You're going in dice jam. Be a good guy. <laughs> yeah, be a fucking good guy. That's that's why you go 2D6. Uh, seven plus eight, also landing. Gron, as you stir, the third hit towards Califex. And 11 plus 8 also landed. In Gron's bleariness, he sees Califex taking these blows. He's just going to thrust himself between Hargot and Califex and take this last hit. That is 9. Gron, you use your reaction to protect your lifelong companion, taking 9, leaving you at 1. And the bloodied and injured Califex remaining conscious behind you. It's your turn. I'm really raging now. So, Gron gets up and steadies himself. You broke the only rule. Let me take the hits. Let's finish this. Together. Together. Gron is going to re-enter his rage and, again, charge directly at Hargot. Would he take the three again? Yes. Alphex also would take the three. Okay. 26 to hit. Absolutely hits. 17 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to attack again. Oh, yeah. 25 to hit. Absolutely hits. 
And double sixes, which is 19 bludgeoning damage. Even halved, Gron and Califex paint a picture. Yes! <laughs> Gron looks towards Califex, as he has so many other times in battle, and they share a nod before turning their gaze back to Hargot. And together, Gron and Califex charge at Hargot, and Gron now feeling empowered by the presence of his friend and feeling his life affirmed by saving the life of his friend, now lands a flurry of hits with his maul against Hargot, finishing him once and for all. As the crumpled form of Hargot Bloodhorn falls before you, Califex, hand on your shoulder, takes a deep breath and says, For us. Is this what you pictured when you said we should come to Akros together? Oh, Gron. <laughs> Not at all. After that little exchange with Califex, Gron turns his eyes towards the lifeless form of Hargot. Give me an investigation check. 14. Quickly overturning him, you easily find the large, many jewel-encrusted necklace on his form. The massive ruby itself, the centerpiece, as well as a lot of other jewelry that he has taken from his slain foes about 200 gold worth, as well as this malicious blood-covered axe, which on that roll would certainly catch your eye. Can I examine this axe? Does it seem like it has anything mechanically to offer me right now? Just go ahead and give me a quick insight check with advantage. 17. The power of this weapon seems to not fade when Hargot falls. It appears magical, to say the least. I'm going to take the axe. Okay. And I'm obviously going to take the ruby and as much treasure as we can fill our pockets with. Your quarry now in hand, as you and Califex together rush back down the side of this ruined coliseum. To your friends, I will hold the line here. Okay. Califex leaps back into the center of this pit. The bodies of the victims of this temple, as well as those of Hargot's warband that still fight on against the Akroans. Califex returning to the front. Hold them back! Don't let them follow Gron! Gron is limping pretty badly. He's really, really hurt, making his way out of the Temple of Triumph. He's gonna pop open a health potion. Guzzle that down. All right, so I'm going to regain six. Cool. As you set off towards Andromedian Clicks, Gron, after that harrowing encounter, we return to the battle initiative. Up next, through the fog cloud that still looms in the area around Andromedy Clicks, Volkos, and the rest of their units, you see the ruthless wolf riders give chase to the flame speakers with disadvantage. Three plus mod missing against the injured and retreating flame speakers. You see the other hordes through the fog charging around. Clicks and Andromedy, one coming towards your unit, attacking recklessly. That's going to be 10 plus 8. I believe that just does it. So, rolling power against a toughness roll from you. Uh, 19 over here. Okay, I do have a 15 plus 6 over here, inflicting one casualty against your unit. And so, Clix and Andromedy are both going to take some attacks from some Minotaurs. These are all flat rolls as well. Against Clix, that's a 5 plus 6 misses. Against Andromedy, that's a 16 plus 6, which will hit. No, too high. <laughs> right, I surpassed this threshold of exactly, Andromedy's it's a window. AC. And that is going to be 8 plus 4 slashing damage against Andromeda. So 12? Yes, 12 total. You can see on the other side of the flame speakers, far through the fog cloud, another one of these warbands managing to harrow the flame speakers and attack on a 9 plus 8 that will hit the flame speakers. Okay. Clicks and Andromedy from your view through the fog, you do see 
one of the war bands managed to inflict another casualty upon the flame speakers, their numbers now dwindling. Volkos trying to do everything in his power to maintain the morale of this unit. He's going to make this roll with advantage. <laughs> Barveros, guide us in this moment. We shall not fall by this darkness. He maintains the morale check. The flame speakers do not fall, but they are certainly looking very worse for wear. The giant folk that have been mustering make their attacks. This is going to be against, even through the fog, so this is going to be with disadvantage, against Clix and Andromedes' unit and Polymede, who is flying overhead. Even at disadvantage, that is a 10 plus 10 against the... Hey against the ground units so against Andromeda go ahead and roll against toughness here another 19 I did get another nat 20 fuck you <laughs> yeah yeah quite that's, that I'm, sums up my feelings entirely quite. I'm so sorry no you're not I'm, I'm trying to set a stage of dire situation here okay um, yeah. as another casualty is inflicted upon the Acroans this is an attack with disadvantage against Polymede. And that is a two on the dice that misses entirely. That's them turning to the Legion. Moving into formation behind the flame speakers, you can see another Acroan unit engage in the warband that has begun flanking. And they're going to attack. Unfortunately, unable to connect. Polymede is also going to continue her call, Lightning against another force. She moves above and over the ensuing combat on the ground towards the giants, continuing her call lightning like any good storm sorcerer would. That is a 16 plus mod from her. She is going to connect Andromedy through the fog. You can see these are giants. They do not have the highest AC in the world. They are huge and thus easy target for Polymede's lightning. She's going to make her roll against their toughness, though. Even able to land these blows, she's unable to cut through and land any casualties. After seeing all this, we go back to Andromedy and clicks. So I'd like to throw a web over the area that the wolf riders are in and try okay. to catch them and restrain them awesome. like that uh, if they can make me a dex save. You got it. That is a 14. Ah, uh, 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 my DC is 15. Hell yeah. Very cool. So they are entrapped by these by these webs. Okay. Uh, tangled in the threads of fate, and then we are going to attack them with advantage yeah. because they're restrained. Also, their speed is zero, so they can't leave that space. Very cool. That's going to be a 21 to hit, I think. Absolutely hits. And then I guess we roll power against them. Uh, what are you back there? Oh, you're a 20 back there. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Awesome. Well, uh, I've only got a 17 over here, so that will absolutely beat it. You inflict a casualty against the menacing wolf riders and their king. Do critical hits deal double damage or not? You know what? This is the first crit we've had. I'm going to say it does. All right. You crit on your power roll. You get to inflict two casualties. And against these wolf riders whose size is only four, they now have to roll morale. So for that, it would be a 25 DC. Very cool. Because of their leader, they do have quite a high morale stat. And so on a, a 17 plus 6. 23. They 23. Disband. The unit disbands. Whew. Amazing. Andromedy, even so, I will say that while these menacing minotaurs are cut down by your hoplites, from where the ones that remain scatter and flee, you see the large dire wolf bound away and in its place, the pale rider, the wolf king, still remains. Okay. Anything else from you or Clix? I'm going to pass the mic to Clix here, but I'm good. So it's just this wolf king left bound? It's just him. You see him stand, 
his legs still trapped in this web as he screams out, Die! <laughs> Wait, well, what did he say? Die. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, <laughs> last question. Can I get a sense of, or am I able to see how close Gron is to this? I will say give me a, give me a perception check. I don't even know what planet I'm on. That wasn't that one. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, you look around at this chaos, unable to spot Gron anywhere at all. Okay, all right. I mean, I just got rid of a one, so the next one can't be a bad roll. I think I'm going to try and hide and make my way to flank the Wolf King and get out of the actual skirmishes themselves. Okay, so you leave Andromeda's side, your unit, you detach. Go ahead and give me a stealth roll. 22. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make a perception check here on my end. But you stick to the shadows of the numerous burning buildings and are able to find a nearby hiding spot to the scene that you had just witnessed. Am I able to use my potion while hidden? Sure. I'm going to do that. So I just heal for six. Bottom of the initiative, Volkos. Now seeing you, Andromedy, in the distance across the field... As you come to the aid of the remaining flame speakers. Hey, thanks for that one, Andromedy! He is going to try and have the remaining flame speakers attack the single Wolf King, managing to land their attack. Andromedy, you see a flurry of firebolts from the flame speakers erupt around this singular, unyielding form. And after the smoke clears, you can see in the distance this clearly broken and burned body, but he remains standing, unyielding. The webs are flammable, so he does take extra fire damage while in the webs. And that would be another four points of fire damage. Cool. Go ahead and roll either Insight or Arcana. Eh, Not brilliant. Only a 14 Arcana. Even on that roll, this terrifying visage reminds you of the encounter you had with Califex, Bratos, and the zealotous rage gore minotaurs outside of Death Bellow Canyon. Okay, top of the round. Gron, you've just fled the Temple of Triumph. Califex behind you. What do you do? Does Gron know where his friends are? You probably would have seen... At the very least, Andromedy used their portent. So I'm going to say go ahead and give me either Perception or Survival with advantage. 21. You can plainly see the Horde still greatly outnumbers the remaining forces of the Akroan Legion. In this chaotic scene, you are able to track and find your way towards Andromedy. Can I make my way there this turn? Yeah. So I find Andromedy. Andromedy, what's the situation? It looks about as good as you do, my friend. (laughs) I've never felt better. Hargot is no more. But I feel like you already know that. I could see your battle atop the temple. I was not sure if you would prevail. I am so glad that you did. I had some help from a few friends. Thank you. I give a humble bow. Andromeda, you bow at Gron. And as you do, the tremendous ruby that Gron has carried to you shoots out of wherever he was hiding it and begins circling around you as the jade did before. In a flash of brilliant light, as if it were meant to be, the two gems interlock in the center of this crown. Andromeda, you feel the power of this creation's eye awaken. The full abilities completely understood in your mind. Just as well, as you begin to understand this artifact, a tremendous glistening wave of energy bursts forth from it in all directions. All of the forces of the Horde and the Legion are washed in the brilliant kaleidoscope of light. And when that light fades, everyone in Akros can plainly and terrifyingly 
see a massive, horrible shadow rise up out of the swaths of minotaurs and other monstrous forces and begin swirling in the sky above the ruined Temple of Triumph. Surrounding this, you can all see the gods in their forms. Look upon this shadow, with Clothis, Perforos, and even in the clouds far above Keranos. Looking down, they see Mogus brought low, and Erois standing, weakened. At this sight, Erois lays down his glorious arms and speaks. Now, brother, look upon the shadow of your ruin. Is this what you want? Is this how you wish to win this endless fight between us? After a moment, the slaughter god lets out a billowing cry of rage. I only care to see your ruin, lesser twin. I could kill you even now, and my destiny would be complete. Standing over this form brought low, Erois extends his hand towards his brother, saying, Even if it means the end of your own people, look how this terrible shade distorts even their view of you, whom they love without restraint. Is this to be my end as well as yours? And in this moment, you see Clothis rise above the two of them, with not only her voice, but on the ground below, Andromedes as well. No, this is not your destiny this day, Mogus, god of slaughter. As she speaks, the light pouring from creation's eye bursts and gleams, a myriad of colors, this shadow seeming to be rent back at its power as she continues. For without ruin, there is no rebirth. Without death, there is no cycle. Look past your equal twin, and know the greater darkness, which serves to destroy us all. God and mortal alike. They all together look upon the shadow as it flickers in and out of its formless, twisting existence before it is scattered in a final wash of blinding light. This light fades, and in all of your remaining view, the horde lay in ruin, the source of their bitter and endless hunger now seemingly gone. The god of slaughter looks up toward the god of victory, towards this extended hand, takes it in his own and rises. The forms of the Nixian gods shimmer, as you see them begin to retreat into this. Cool. I'm a little confused about what's happening on the ground. Andromeda, you see much of the remaining horde completely destroyed. You see many of them dead, and you see many others appearing much more exhausted, and this dark force that has overtaken them gone. And you said most or all? Most. There are still some. This is the moment to seize this victory, right? Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't be Greek if we didn't have some deus ex machina. So let's go. Is uh, the Wolf King still there? He is still standing. So I don't know where we're at in the initiative. So let me know where that's all about. It's still Ground's turn. It is still Ground's turn. You simply gave Andromedy the ruby and Ground's like, then all that other crit? shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> i think so gron you can hear in the sky overhead the storm auger polymede cry out over the forces that remain on the ground the gods have blessed this day seize it now drive them back all right with all of my seven hit points left but emboldened by the presence of someone who uh, knows how to heal i'm going to charge at this wolf king here go for it so I'm going to run directly at him and invoke my rage as I arrive. Everyone within 10 feet of me takes three fire damage. Then I'm going to attack him recklessly. Hell yeah. Go for it. Going down swinging. Ooh, reckless failed me. It's a 14 to hit? Uh, 14 will miss. Yeah, it will. All right. Well, no matter. I'll try it again. Cool. 
And that time it's a 25 to hit. Hell yeah, that'll hit. Nice. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Uh, 14 bludgeoning damage. Gron, you look upon this horrible, twisted form, and indeed, it would immediately remind you of the encounter you had when you reunited with Califex. This body is horribly broken, and yet it still stands in defiance of that. It looks at you as you assault it. This shadow may be gone from this place, but it stirs a greater force than this world has ever seen. Gron, I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw as it retaliates against you with a necrotic blast of power. 18. That'll pass. So you take seven halved to three. The remaining forces of the horde are no match for even the modest forces that still remain standing of the Legion. You can see Califex and his hoplites storming out of the Temple of Triumph and engage with the giants that remain alongside Polymede who flies overhead. You can see Arissa and the remaining flame speakers cutting down the single Minotaur warband that remains. All about this scene, you see the tide of battle has turned as we come to Clix and Andromedy, who see only this horrid wolf king remaining. Who's, who's first in the initiative? I think technically Clix. Okay. I'm going to come out of hiding and sneak up on this wolf king. Attack him. Does uh, 17 hit? 17 just hits. Cool, cool, cool. All right. 14 piercing damage. Nice. Clicks, you can see this horribly injured, clearly should be dead Minotaur still standing amongst these burning webs and Gron and your own attacks laying into him as we go to Andromedy. I'm going to join my companions in the area that they've gone to, and can the Wolf King be a con save, please? Sure. That is a 13. That will fail the DC 15 as I hostily levitate the Wolf King 20 feet in the air. You. Where hopefully he will not be able to make any more attacks. Absolute motherfucker. Hell Feels yeah. Feels good to see this again. Hell yeah. <laughs> you levitate this monstrous, unyielding minotaur into the air where a moment passes as he flails and screams and wails in his fury. But quickly that fury begins to fade from his form and in his dying breath. Your victory here means nothing. The blood of Croxa brought from the underworld by Merukios the Undying will wash over you all. The Wolf King of the Rage Gore dies, and you are left with this ominous tale. As the forces of Akros, the Legion, what stands left of it, sees this day, as cheers and cries of victory wash about this battlefield. You can see a number of broken and injured Akroans, flame speakers, and other fighters, as a hobbling Volkos draws towards the three of you. What do you do? Clix goes over and helps prop Volkos up and helps him walk. Gron is staring at the lifeless wolf king pensively. He mouths the name Marukios, the Undying, and ponders what this means. Very cool. Go ahead and give me a quick mm, religion check. <laughs> Twelve. Gron is unsure. I think you would think these words possibly true. But what weight that carries and what that means, you do not know. I guess I'll say this to Volkos. Take me to where the wounded are being tended to. I still have some power left to help them. Oh, well, you and me both, friend. You and Volkos and Clix retreat into the Colophon, where you can see very near to the entrance, amid the sort of lesser but still themselves, very elite residences, a myriad of triage sites having been made where numerous lay injured. Cool. I'm going to use the 
five spell slots I have left on Cure Wounds to just heal people who are injured. And when I'm out of that, I'll spare the dying on the dying that can be spared. Awesome. You do this. Volkos following with you. He himself using his lowly but adequate two spell slots to do the same. While you do this, give me a perception check. Nat one. God damn it. On a nat one, you find a soldier. Someone familiar, perhaps, trying to look as stalwart as she can. This being the elite hoplite who, at the beginning of your journey, denied you entrance to the colophon. She looks down over the broken body of Asrius, champion of Erois, as he does not stir. That terrible javelin. Some sort of poison or curse. I've tried all that I can. The breaking of curses is not something that I have learned. I am sorry. Was he a friend of yours? He was my teacher once. After... After he won the last Eroan Games, he took to training other warriors. I was one of his first. I know our fight is not over. I know... Whatever happens, the gods are with us. We believe in you, voice of Clothis. Thank you, soldier. The fight is not over, but we survive to continue it. And that is what matters. Clix, what have you been doing as Volkos and Andromeda tend to the wounded? I guess, like, looking around, are people, like, trapped under rubble? Clix is helping out. I want to make it clear. Clix sure. is being helpful for once in his life. If you want to look for survivors, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, I'd be better at trying to route people out of crushed buildings or rubble or stuff like that. Sounds good. Clicks, as you begin searching through the rubble and the dead for anyone left with life, go ahead and give me an investigation check. 23. Awesome. On a 23, digging through the bodies in this ruined scene, this last stand in front of the colophon, you find a few deceased bodies of flame speakers. Among them, however, a voice cries out, Down here, I'm down here. A weakened, exhausted, but alive, Marcos. What's, what's Marcos's situation? He looks to be trapped under a fallen pillar. Marcos, the one of the two mentors, being the one that actually gave Gron a bunch of his weapons and the older looking of the pair of them. I'll, I'll help you out of here. I'm just going to try and push up that rubble. Okay. Go ahead and give me a strength check. 14. All right. He looks up at you and says, Oh, thank you for trying, but we're not going to need some bigger arms, friend. Okay, so I can't help you, but I have just the friend. I'm going to run back and get Gron. Awesome. Gron, you see clicks scurry up behind you. Just as you see in the distance... Using his spear more as a walking stick, a injured but standing Califex. Gron snaps out of his pensive stare. Hey, hey. The uh, what? A, f- a friend. What is it? I think a friend of yours needs some help. A friend of mine. And Click says that, pointing back where he came from, so not to confuse him with Califex. Uh, let's go. Califex, hearing this as well, comes with, and I'm going to say the three of you together. We'll probably be able to do this, but Gron, go ahead and make a athletics roll with advantage, as you find a trapped body of Marcos the Flame Speaker. Oh, you again. Good to see you, too. <laughs> That's a 25. Hell yeah. The three of you are able to rescue Marcos and deliver him into the Colophon, where you meet up with Andromeda and Volkos. Oh, that could have gone worse. <sighs> That's something of an understatement. I think we could have taken them all. Yeah, sure. Andromeda face palms a bit at that. <laughs> Andromeda, you do, and perhaps noticing for the first time after this battle and everything that has ensued, the brilliant and still faintly glowing crown that is now floating above your head. Volkos looking towards you says, So... I take it you found what you were looking for out there in the wilderness. Aye, we did. Do you think it will be enough? I do not know. I will pray for guidance on what we are to do next, but if what the Wolf King said was true, then this 
hungry blood must be sealed within the underworld again. Aye. We must find its source and do just that. It looks like some of us are in a lot better shape to do such a thing than others. But if the scene that we all saw in the sky when you turned that crown on is anything to show for it, it seems that the gods of this land have indeed rallied to this destiny that your god so wishes for us all to have. Andromeda will nod solemnly at Volkos. And I think if they're done at the triage center, they'll return to their chamber in the citadel and do as they said they would, pray to Clothus for guidance about what next they should do. Gran and Clix, uh? as you have this moment of reprieve, what do you do? What are those, uh, what are those things called? I could use a, a bath. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Click starts licking Gron's shoulder. Oh, God. <laughs> um, is, this, is this what they meant when they talked about a bath? Califex just shakes his head, both of you. <laughs> just kind of head in hand, looks to the two of you. I think a proper bath is most well-deserved. Come, let's find somewhere quiet. Yes, let's. Uh, the three of you find a bathhouse in one of the lower buildings of the Citadel, perhaps even the same one that Andromedy previously had their outbreak of endrophage. You see some holes in the drywall, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, some ruined pottery and torn cloth and tapestry. Is there anything you say or do in this scene? Let me ask this. Does Clix actually get in the water? <sighs> Clix will paw at it hesitantly. Uh -huh. Feels a little... doesn't like it. However, it's warm or hot to the touch, right? The water? It's warm. Yeah, Clix is going to get in and let, let those little bones kind of loosen up a little bit and feel a little bit better. And lets out a long sigh of relief. <sighs> Clix and Gron's perhaps... First true bath ever. <laughs> I'm going to have both of you go ahead and make me constitution saving throws. <laughs> Just drown. <laughs> <laughs> if only, if only that was the shit that I was going to end Like roller coaster with. tycoon. You get in the water and there's no way out. You're dead. Thank you. <laughs> 22. So you're not doing shit to cool. me, Buster. I rolled a nat 20. <laughs> Scrubs for both so of you, hard. but especially, <laughs> but especially for Gron, this bath is just the best feeling you have ever had in your lives. I've been missing out. Yeah, I'm gonna bathe every day now. Gron, you are washed of not only your blood, but the blood of Hargot. As the three of you rest, Gron, this axe that sits nearby. This sort of malicious intent about it slowly begins to be revealed to you. Blood Axe of Fury. <laughs> yeah. So basically, deals an extra d6 every first hit, and then you can use your reaction if you reduce a creature to zero to immediately regain half of the damage your killing blow dealt in health. Andromedy, we go to you. You kneel down for prayer in your chambers in the Citadel. What do you do? I am going to take ten minutes to ritually cast from my Oracle's Piety Divination. I'm actually going to find a map of Theros, or of the North, and sort of lay it out before me as I do this. You're in the Citadel. You can find one easily. Yep. And I will say, Clothus, show me the path to my foe. Where is... Marukios the Undying. You speak these words, and immediately your vision flashes to a very familiar sight. You would vividly remember this, one of the first omens you received at the start of this journey, that of a billowing mouth of shadows as it engulfs your view and you with it. As this happens, you hear the voice of Clothis in your mind. 
The time draws near. Look towards this screaming shadow. You know from which this horrid darkness lurks. Go ahead and roll me a religion or insight check with advantage. 18 religion. Your vision flashes once more as this shadow now resembles in its same shape, not made of smoke, but made of rock. And you see a terrible cave in the middle of a vast canyon. This cave itself looks like a vicious, fanged maw. And an 18, looking over this map of the region, you know this can only be one place. The Kragma within Death Bellow Canyon. Very good. I make a note of that. I roll up the map, and I suppose... You roll up your map, and arriving just when she intended to is Polymead at your door. I thought you said she was a sorcerer and not a wizard. <laughs> well, you got me there. But <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm never, ever, ever going to miss the chance to drop Tolkien in any of this. So there you go. Totally fair. Yes, Sophistes. Oh, there's no need for that anymore, my friend. You have far surpassed anything that I could ever hope to teach you. You flatter me. You have always been an ever-curious individual. And it was you who told me that, as oracles, we should never stop learning. But I am sure you did not come here to reminisce. Well, we can try, can't we? Gather your party. Tyrannica would like to speak words before the remaining legion. And all of Akros. Make ready. Thank you. And I will take that, and I'll go off in search of my buddies. Awesome. Gran and Clix, you find Andromedy, arrive to see perhaps the end of your bathing experience. The three of you, with Califex at your sides, make for the top of the citadel, where there you see the regent, Lady Tyrannica, flanked by her two remaining counselors, Polymede, Arissa, as over the whole of the colophon, the able and the injured. Polymede speaks out, and with it, her echoing voice says, Behold, citizens of Akros, Citizens of Theros, it is by the grace of the gods that we have seen this day to its end. But it is through the actions of these three heroes that we will see the next day rise. Looking to the three of you as Polymede speaks, it is at this time that Tyrannica, still a bit jarred by everything that has happened, looks and says, What am I to call you? There is a legend of three servants of fate who tended the ledger of all mortal souls on the banks of the Tartix and made certain that no one made the crossing before or after their appointed hour. They were known as the Triad of Fates. I hope we adopt their name not in arrogance but in homage as a reminder of the gravity of our task. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.